The Blue Beetle. DC is trying to restart their universe uh, basically around this movie, but I mean, they've got so many things going on right now. It, it, it's hard to stay concentrated on what they're doing. They've got, uh, supposedly they're bringing the Aquaman movie out and it won't have a great deal to do with the new stuff. The Shazam movie came out and not a lot of that is going to roll into the new universe. They're even considering redoing or finishing the uh, Wonder Woman movie. And that also isn't going to have a great deal to do with their new vision. The Blue Beetle is supposed to, to jumpstart their, um, their new universe. I, I don't think it's working that well. Because they had a lot of jokes that you could tell they wanted to say, why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the other side, right, right? And it looked like they told the joke and they waited for the reaction of the audience. I was in the audience. A lot of those jokes didn't have any reaction. And on top of everything else, they had freaking George Lopez in the movie. So you expected, I mean, they had a comedian in the movie. Not, not so much, not so much. Um, a lot of people that were at the theater, a lot of people that I've talked to online, a lot of people that I've, I've talked to in, in just, you know, talking to people, you know, in real time, like we used to do in the old days. A lot of people that I've spoken to are wondering why this had to be such a heavy Latin movie. And the answer is because in the comic, it's a heavy Latin movie, and that from years ago, years and years ago. So uh, Jaime Reyes, uh, Reyes is a Mexican dude. He's, he's Mexican. When he gets superpowers, and his family's Mexican, you know, an enemy that he fights is Mexican, you know. So it, it you know, it's, that, that's just what it is, you know. Nobody asks how come so many characters in the Superman comic book are all white. They, you know, you just accept it. This, this particular comic book, which translates into a movie, just coincidentally happened to be predominantly Latin. One of the things I didn't like um, was the villain. They're, they're missing the point on villains lately. A lot of villains are missing the point. If you... Thanos was a good villain because... He, he cared about what he was doing. He wasn't just waking up evil saying, I'm going to throw a baby out a window. He wasn't doing that. He woke up and said, there's a problem and I have to be strong enough to fix it. People aren't going to like what I got to do, but I'm doing it anyway. And he thought he was doing something for the betterment of people and he was determined. He thought he was doing the right thing. He just had to be strong enough to do it. Killmonger was a great villain. He had an idea of what could happen. He saw oppression and he saw that, oh, if I go here and get this strength from these people, I can use it to stop the rest of the world from being oppressed. He, he thought he was doing the right thing. Now, he was very angry. Both of them were angry. But they thought that they were doing a good thing and they were determined. A villain is more intriguing and more dangerous if he truly believes what he's doing is the right thing to do. He can't be swayed. You're not going to talk him out of it. In this movie, they had a villain, but they didn't show you until the end that he thought he was doing the right thing, and it was too late then. You didn't. You couldn't sympathize with him. You couldn't say, "Oh, well, he's those guys in that room are dead because this guy believes he's doing the right thing." He was, he was killing people, he was doing stuff, and you were like, I, why is he doing that? There was, there was no backstory, there was no nothing, and then you get it. The heroes were killing people and joking about it. And I, it's part of that, I guess they were trying to be comical, but I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, they're, they're murdering people, man. They're, you know, they're killing people, you're supposed to be protecting people, you're out there killing people, that's not right. Um... 
his family is a part of the comic. His family is a part of the story. I did not like his family being this much involved in what was going on with him. And stuff was happening like, there's, there's a moment in a movie where the leader sends the villain out to go do this thing, go do this thing. And the, the villain is right there looking at the person she sent out. And that villain goes up and it's like, bang, bang, bang. I won. And then turns around and says, gets on the mic and goes, I've, I've won. And I'm thinking you're three yards away. They're looking at you. Why, would, why are you on the mic? This is in a movie. Everybody just wanted to touch their ear. In the movies, if you, if you want to use mental powers, you got to touch your, you gotta touch your, your forehead. I mean, your, your, your temple. Boop, 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 boop. I'm using mental powers. That's to let the audience know. If you're talking on a comm link, you can't just talk. You've got to touch your ear so the audience knows <gasps> he's on comm link. He's talking to somebody. So the villain had to do that. The villain had to go, I've got him. And I'm thinking she's, she's looking at you. I mean, she could literally take three steps and be standing right next to you. you she's right there. Why are you doing that? Then there's, there's a thing where somebody gets into an accident and this thing falls. I don't want to get into deep descriptions. This thing falls. These two people are holding hands. This thing falls and goes, oh, look out. And it pushes, the, the other person gets pushed. And this thing falls that should be the size of like a room, right? Should be at least three, four, five yards across, but they're only inches away from each other when they show it. And I'm like, what? There were a lot of mistakes in this movie, a lot of mistakes. Now, in most movies, in almost every movie, you gotta suspend belief. I saw a movie about a superhero, about an alien that came to Earth, looked like a regular everyday white guy. He's an alien from the other side of the universe. Came to Earth, looked like a regular everyday white guy, put on glasses, put his underwear on, it, on the outside of his pants, and would fly through the air. One day, he punched a bank robber and knocked him out. Another day, he punched a meteorite the size of the planet and the meteorite blew up. And I'm thinking, how come, that, how come that villain didn't blow up? That dude with that bank, he didn't blow up. You gotta suspend belief. So in this movie, I, I suspend belief. I'm saying to myself, you know what? Oh, okay. But you had to do that like every three minutes. You had to go, oh, okay, all right, okay. Okay, all right, I see where you're going. You know what, if the, when the movie starts, at about 15 minutes after the movie starts, they just sprinkle movie tropes all over it. You know, somebody's standing in the mirror and they're looking in the mirror and they're in the bathroom and there's nothing behind them and then they close the mirror and then they open it and they close it again. Da, 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 da. The villain or the monster or whatever is standing behind them. Movie trope. You go to a hallway, you scream down the hallway, Billy, Billy, it's dark. You don't hear anything. In my world, you turn the doggone lights on, but they always sneak into the darkness. And they're like, Billy, Billy, Billy heard you. If he's not dead or possessed by a monster, he, he what, did he suddenly go deaf and he didn't hear you? If I'm in my house and I call out and I go, Billy, and Billy doesn't answer, one, if it's dark, I'm gonna turn the light on. Two, I'm gonna call him again, but then I'll probably call him on the cell phone. I'm not going into the darkness looking for somebody who's clearly not answering me. Whatever stopping them from talking is probably gonna stop me too. I'm not doing, I don't understand it. Movie trope. This movie is filled, it's like trope, 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 trope. Everything, you, when, when somebody does something, you're like, I bet there's somebody in the closet. It is. When they say, Watch out, those rocks are gonna fall. They do. When you say to yourself, that guy, everybody in the movie loves him. He's gonna die or be the villain. He is. It's, it, everything you expect to happen happens. They just shoved it all in there. Shoved, shoved it all in there. It's like a buffet with a lot of stuff that you would expect at a regular buffet but they tell you it's special and you go there and they just got regular buffet stuff. That's what it is. Just a great big line. You're like, oh, yeah, I expected that. Oh, look at that. Rolls? Who expected that? It's just, a, it's just a bunch of stuff that you would expect to happen in a movie. 
the superhero gets his mask ripped and you can only see part of his face. But his mask is metal, so I don't know how it got ripped. He's wearing the suit, which is supposed to be metal, and it looks like cloth. It was an okay movie, don't get me wrong. It's a superhero movie. People are going to go see a superhero movie. If you weigh it against the regular movies, it, it might do well. It probably will, financially. But... It's not going to do well against other superhero movies. This is not the movie. You, say, you know what? I think the reason that they went with the Blue Beetle is because they were mad about the cyborg character and all of the stuff that happened with Mr. Ray over there. They didn't want to do that. So they said, we need an another robot guy. Marvel started their thing with a robot guy. We're not going to count that the fact that it actually started with Blade, but we're going to say that they started their thing with a robot guy as Iron Man. We need a robot guy. Blue Beetle, he's a robot guy. Because there were a lot of things that happened in like the Iron Man movie. That happened. There were a lot of things that happened in a lot of superhero movies that end up happening in this one. And it was, it was okay. I don't want to give anything away. I want, I want to give a lot of things away and talk about some specifics. But I'm, maybe I'll make a spoiler video later. But this video, non-spoiler, and it was, it was extra medium extra medium. It wasn't very large. It wasn't very small. It was extra medium, if that makes sense. So I would give the Blue Beetle, filled with too many jokes, and out of all of the superhero movies, probably the worst hallway fight I've seen in any movie. It was good, but I mean, after seeing the Guardians of the Galaxy hallway fight, and like two minutes or whatever it was, I'm just fighting, just good. And then I see this, I'm like, I could have had a V8. I would give this movie a strong, powerful, superhero-like seven. Seven is my... Seven. Seven bags of popcorn, man. Because that's what I think about that. More importantly, what do you think about that? Now that we had a chance to talk, let's talk again in the comments. And as always, if you like the video, if you like the content, please subscribe. And then like. Popcorn passport. Get your popcorn passport.